Hey friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and you are on my homestead here in Wyoming. And today I am excited because we are going to be making a lot of snacks. I was at the grocery store yesterday and you know those little like snack pack puddings? I wanted them so badly and it got me thinking they're not even that good. Why do I want them? And I think it's just, I want pudding, but I also want the convenience of it whenever it wants. So that got me thinking, I need to make some convenience items, snack items, so that I can quickly just pull them whenever I want a snack and I'm not resulting to prepackaged or anything like that. Obviously there's a time and a place when we're up camping or hiking. I do prefer those sometimes just because they're a little bit easier to deal with. You don't need refrigeration, but when I'm at my house or we're going on a quick road trip and I can bring a cooler, why not make all of these items up on my own? So today I'm super excited to be using some of our garden produce. I have these peaches left over from our peach haul this summer. They are starting to get a little freezer burnt. Nothing that's, you know, we can't manage. So I want to get those all used up and start making some fruit leather with those. Then we're gonna make some parfaits. That's one of my like go-to, I love parfaits. Um, and then like a fruit and yogurt parfait. And then we're gonna make some little vanilla snack pack puddings along with a mixed nut. I find I oftentimes result to little bags of mixed nuts. So I figured I can make these so much better and make them something that I actually really, really enjoy. So we're gonna do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I wanna start with is the things that are going to take the longest amount of time and that's gonna be the items we need to bake and also the fruit leather. So I'm gonna get these going. You can see we have a little bit of snow building up on them so we need to get these out. I think it's gonna be perfect for fruit leather though. And then I also have some strawberries that are in the same condition. They are perfectly fine but they are stuck in like a giant block. So they're not super practical to use because anytime I want to make like a smoothie, I don't want a huge block of strawberries. So I'm going to put the big block portions in as well. And then just the little pieces that I can actually use in a smoothie, I'm going to keep. Okay, so here's our fruit. I'm going to go ahead and turn our heat on just to like a medium. And I'm gonna keep a close eye on this because this is definitely overflowing. So when it starts to melt, things might spill outside. So we're gonna keep an eye on this, but just get it melted down and into more of like a puree form. Okay, so while the fruit cooks down, we are going to get started on our nuts. Look at me, who am I? An apron wearing woman nowadays. I decided it's enough clothes that I have ruined from cooking without an apron. My sweet grandma sent me a set of aprons. So look at me keeping my clothes nice and clean. Okay, so let's get started on the nuts. These are gonna be super easy and super quick and then we can kind of get a win under our belt really quickly. So these are a pretty savory smoky nut. So it's going to be cashews, almonds, peanuts, and pistachios. And then we're gonna kind of put them I'm more of like a savory route with a little bit of sweetness. So, oh, I think they're gonna be so good. We love kind of nut mixtures like this. So, and I also think it'd be really good for like a party if you were just needing like a little snack for people to eat. I think this would be really good to have on hand for that as well. So not just your own personal enjoyment, but also for your friends and family. So let's go ahead and get that going. It's gonna be super quick, super easy. And then we'll have that win under our belt. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of make this in batches. There are a few steps. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to roast our nuts. So I need three-fourths cups of cashews, a half cup, and then a fourth. Three-fourths cup of almonds. And woo, all of your nuts should be not salted, totally raw. We're gonna add the salt and seasoning to them so everything is just completely raw, no salt, no nothing. 
then we want a half a cup of peanuts and a half a cup of pistachios. These are pistachios, I actually bought them in the shell and then I went ahead and just peeled them. If you wanna get the paper off, all I did was just put the shelled nuts in one bowl and then I went outside, it's a little bit breezy today, and I just held the bowl up and one bowl below, poured them in and the paper's kind of filtered off. So that was super easy. There's a half cup of pistachios and I think we actually have enough of everything. I'm gonna make a double batch. I don't want to overcrowd anything though. So, okay, I think we have room. So I'm gonna add in the other half cup of the pistachios, another three fourths of a cup of our cashews. Another three fourths of a cup of almonds. And a half cup of raw peanuts. And I should mention the reason why I shucked all of my own pistachios is I couldn't find any that didn't have salt or any flavoring on them if you get them already shelled, so I just shelled my own. I feel like all of the ones that come pre-shelled, one, they're a lot more expensive, and two, they're all flavored, so that was making it a little bit tough. My oven is preheated to 325. I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the oven for like 10 to 12 minutes until they become roasted. Definitely keep a close eye on them. This is a lot of expensive nuts and we don't want them to burn. Okay, now I have a large bowl and you wanna make sure you're using a glass bowl, not a plastic bowl, and you'll see why in a minute. And we would traditionally do two tablespoons of olive oil but because I'm doubling this, I'm gonna do four tablespoons, which is equivalent to a fourth of a cup. So this is a fourth of a cup of nice olive oil. And this is one where you're really gonna taste the olive oil. So try to use one that's a little bit nicer if you have it. If not, no problem. Okay, fourth of a cup of olive oil, and then a fourth of a cup of agave. The reason I did the oil first is because now this is lined with oil, so it will slide out of the cup a lot easier. Perfect, fourth of a cup of agave. See, really nothing is left behind because the cup was already oil lined. Okay, then we're gonna put this off to the side. And then this is that bowl that we just had the pistachios in, so clean enough because it's gonna be touching pistachios again. So I need two tablespoons of paprika and two tablespoons of chili powder. Then we need one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And if you don't like spice, I would definitely leave this out. This is a half a teaspoon, so I'm gonna do two of those. Remember, we do have the agave, so it'll be pretty well balanced. And then you should do three fourths of a cup of cumin. I don't love cumin, so I'm just gonna do a little bit. That's what I love about cooking from home. And then I also do about, let's do about a half a teaspoon. Perfect, of rosemary. All right, then we want one teaspoon of pepper, so I'm gonna grind that up. And finally, one teaspoon of salt. This is that Redmond's Real Salt. Super good. And this is why we didn't want salted nuts, just so we can control the amount of salt going in. Okay, let's give that a mix. And I'm going to let this sit until our nuts are fully roasted. All right, our nuts are roasted, and I like to tell, this took about 12 minutes. I always try a cashew because I feel like they are kind of the most delicate. So I feel like if they are tasting pretty roasty toasty, then they're probably all pretty good to go. So then we are just going to throw all of the nuts into our agave, oopsie, olive oil mixture. Not too shabby. Just 
pan is very hot. Then we do want to put our parchment paper back on. And I'm just going to give this a quick stir so that each nut is coated. I got a little pistachio. No, nope, that's an almond skin. We are just trying to get it coated in the olive oil agave mixture. Perfect. I think everything is very well covered. And that's going to help then our spices stick. So sprinkle that around. I'm going to put about half of it in. Give it a good mix. And then put the other half in. Woo! Pepper and cayenne might make me sneeze. Mix that around, and once you're adding the seasoning, you don't want to mix too much because it'll start getting stuck to your spatula and everything. So just mix it so it's evenly coated, and then take our spatula and just spread it out again. Okay, that looks pretty good. Remember, we want as little overlap as possible. Back into the oven, 325 degrees for about two to three minutes, just so we can kind of get this uh, crystallized, or not crystallized, but harden up a little bit. All right, friends, it has been about three minutes. These are becoming very fragrant, so we're gonna call these good. I'm gonna go ahead and let them cool down because they're very hot right now, and then we'll get them packaged up. First snack is done. Okay, our fruit is looking great. It's all defrosted. I just turned up the heat so we can get some of that water to start evaporating. Just since it was frozen, there's kind of a lot of water. So next I'm going to get going on our granola for our fruit and yogurt parfaits. And honestly, granola is just one of those things that's great to have around the house always, because you never know. Whenever you're craving something sweet and salty, granola is a great option. I do enjoy almonds in my granola. So I'm just using some of the leftover raw almonds. I'm just cutting them up rather finely, nothing crazy. Um, so that we can get them added into our granola. And I went ahead and just washed this bowl up. So I'm creating less dishes. So we need four cups of oats. Then we're going to add in our chopped almonds. You can add any nuts you like. Pecans, walnuts, almonds, cashews, peanuts, whatever you enjoy. And I'm going to do one teaspoon of salt. If you were using salted nuts, you might not want to add in that teaspoon and then about a half a cup of cinnamon whoa or so we'll call that good okay next i have some coconut oil so i just need to get this melted so for that what i like to do is just get a pyrex measuring cup and add in my oils and you want to make sure you're using um the refined coconut oil. It does not taste like coconuts at all. So if you don't like coconuts, you will literally not know. If you're allergic to coconut oil or you just don't have it, any neutral oil is going to work. I would recommend using like a avocado oil or something a little bit more healthy. So let's go ahead and melt this in the microwave for like 30 seconds and then we'll see how much we actually have. So we are just shy of a half a cup. The best part about avocado oil is it melts incredibly fast. So you can just add non-melted coconut oil. And then while that melts, we're going to add a half a cup of maple syrup. You could do maple syrup, agave, honey, whatever your heart desires. I'm gonna use maple syrup. And I'm just going to kind of mix it as I pour it in. And then our coconut oil. Give 
that a good mix. And finally, like a teaspoon or so of vanilla. And we have our parchment paper lined dish. And then you're going to just spread it out. I like clumpy granola, so you can leave it a little bit closer. And you just want to make sure that it's about the same thickness all the way around. If you have any pieces that are like floating or anything like that, they tend to burn first. So just do your best to get it about the same thickness. All right, there we have it into a 350 degree oven for like 20 minutes. Okay, so this is how our peach and strawberry mixture is looking. As you can see, it's reduced, not a ton, but I think that will be enough for me. So what I'm going to do is cut the heat. And then I'm going to get out my immersion blender and I'm going to immersion blend. If you're doing it while this is hot still, please be so careful. I do recommend waiting for it to cool down. And if you're doing it in a pan like this, make sure you don't touch the bottom. You don't want to scratch your pan with these. So I just kind of keep it floating, but make sure that it's submerged enough that it's not going to spray hot fruit everywhere. Let's give it a quick stir and make sure we're not missing any big hunks of fruit. Okay, it looks like we got it all good to go. For this recipe, I need to know how much I have. So, I'm gonna ladle it to this so we can get a feel for how much, let's get this over here, how much puree we have. And then there's six cups. We do have, the recipe calls for six cups. We do have just a little bit left, so, I'm just going to take this out and keep it and we're just going to use it on, um, we have some vanilla ice cream so it's like a half a cup so we'll just put that on our ice cream. Okay, back into the pan this goes. And that probably seemed like an unnecessary step but we will be using pectin in this recipe and so when it comes to using pectin you really do need to know how much you actually have. Okay, so like I mentioned, we are using pectin for this rather than a lot of sugar. I wanna keep this pretty low sugar just because it is a, it's a sweet treat, but it's not one that I'm you know trying to get a ton of sugar out of. So if you've never heard of this, this is Pomona's pectin and it's a pectin that you can use for very low sugar um, recipes. It's a bit different than sure gel because you actually come with two different packets. So one of the packets is the actual pectin and one is like a calcium. And so it's a citrus pectin, meaning it gels because of the activated calcium in it, not because of the sugar content. So if you're looking for a low sugar solution, you might wanna check this out. So what we're gonna do is I have a half a teaspoon of water, a half a cup of water, and then here is the calcium. So we're just going to tear that off and pour the calcium into this water. Make sure you get it all out. Put a lid on it and shake it really good. And then to our fruit mixture, we're gonna add in four teaspoons of our calcium mixture. One, two, three, four. 
Give that a good stir, and then we're gonna put this on medium heat and make it simmer. Okay, so in here I have two cups of juice concentrate. I'm gonna whip this for like two minutes. Ideally, you wanna use a blender. I don't have one that you could slowly add something to it, so I'm gonna use this. And then that's been going. I'm gonna open up the pectin and I'm gonna slowly add this in while it continues to mix. We're gonna use the whole packet. I'm actually gonna use this. I think it will help get the lump out a little bit better. Okay, that has mixed very well, the juice with the pectin. So now we're gonna add this in. And we're gonna give this a good stir. I was worried that wasn't gonna combine well. Didn't look like it would, but it's combining pretty easy. Okay. We're gonna let this sit. It's going to come to a simmer. Once it's simmering, it will go for one minute and then we're gonna eat it on our pan. And all we're gonna do is ladle it onto dehydrator trays. If you have dehydrator trays, you wanna use the silicone mat. I have a dehydrator tray, or I have a dehydrator and trays, but I don't have one that's big enough to do all this, so it would take like days, so. I'm gonna go with the oven method and see how that treats us. And you want it a little bit thicker on the edges, if possible, because the edges tend to crisp in first. Okay, I'm gonna call this good for the first tray. I am going to put this on the warm setting in my oven. My oven doesn't go to 115. You wanna cook it at about 115 for like 12 to 14 hours. My oven doesn't go that cool, so I am going to put this on the warm setting and crack the oven door. So let's get this in. And I did look into it and my oven holds warm food at about 170 degrees. So that's why I'm just gonna keep the door a little bit cracked. Okay, and then with the remaining bit, I do wanna try it on the dehydrator just to see how it goes. But like I mentioned, I only have two trays that we can use for this. So that's all we're gonna use. I'm just going to ladle this onto these sheets. Okay, and it just looks like that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get the other one done and then we're gonna dehydrate them same amount of time by 12 to 14 hours at 115 degrees. Our granola was nice and golden nice and hard. It does harden up. It'll be kind of gooey when you take it out of the oven and then it'll get hard as it cools. But I went ahead and took that out at the 23 minute mark. And finally, our last snack we need to cook before we start assembling everything is our pudding. So for this, we need two cups of 2% milk. You could use whole milk. It'll just be a lot richer. Then we need a half of a cup of sugar. This is just white sugar. three tablespoons of cornstarch, three. We are going to add in a little bit of butter at the end. So I only have salted butter. If you're using unsalted butter, you'll want a half a teaspoon of salt. Because I'm using salted butter, I'm gonna do a fourth a teaspoon. You definitely always wanna make sure when you're cooking sweet that you have salt to kind of balance it out. Then we need one egg yolk. And 
one whole leg. Then we're going to turn this onto a medium heat and we're going to whisk it the entire time. First we'll whisk it just to get that cornstarch and sugar really incorporated and get the egg broken up. And pudding is really one of those things that is so simple to make. I grew up making chocolate pudding with my grandma when I was super, super young. So if you're trying to get kids into the kitchen and trying to give them something pretty easy that's rewarding, pudding is one of those things. It's super, super simple. So we're just going to keep mixing this until it comes to a light boil. So until we start seeing bubbles. And then at that point, we're going to take it off the heat. All right, we are bubbling and you can see, you can see this is a lot thicker. So I'm gonna turn, take it off the heat. We're gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla or so. Whisk that in. And this is that vanilla we made together, so this is gonna be so, oh, it smells so good. And then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of butter. If you have a nicer butter that you use for like nicer things, this is one of those situations you wanna use your nicer butter just because you'll really be able to taste it. It's going to bring that kind of rich flavor to the pudding. So we're going to get that all mixed in and then we'll get this all jarred up. I guess I'm going for like the individual serving size. I'm going to pour these into little mason jars and then we kind of have like a little snack pack. These would be great for kids for like a lunch. You could just put them in a Tupperware instead of a glass jar. And this will harden and set, so you wouldn't have to worry about it making a big mess. All right, then just throw the tops on top. If you don't like the film, and I'm just using recycled tops, if you don't like the film that sometimes you get on top of a um, pudding, just lay a piece of saran wrap on top of the pudding so it's touching it and that will prevent the film. I frankly don't care, so I'm just gonna leave it. And then into the fridge these go until they're fully set. Okay, next we're going to assemble our parfaits. So for these, I'm just using plain whole milk yogurt, not flavored or anything. You could use Greek yogurt, flavored yogurt, whatever you want. I like to use this one because I can control how much sweetener goes into it. So I chose five of these because there's five days in a week and I figured during this working week Sam and I can eat these as a quick little snack between calls. Um, I think if you had like older kids and were picking them up from school this would be an awesome snack. So all I'm going to do is just fill the jar up with a little bit of yogurt. And then I'm gonna top it with a few berries. I have strawberries and raspberries. Just like so. And then I, because I didn't get sweet yogurt, like to put just a little dollop of strawberry rhubarb jam right at the top. And here you have this cute little parfait. Then what I like to do, I'm gonna sprinkle some dried blueberries into our granola as well. I, if you can't tell, I love fruit. And then we'll be able to just kind of, see, break up our granola. And then all I would do if I was taking this on a go is I would just put it into a little Ziploc baggie. But since I'm at home working and eating snacks, I'm just going to put this into a mason jar. So I, like I said, work from home. So I don't need my granola in like a to-go container or anything. But if you don't work from home, you'll want to put this in like a little Ziploc baggie or something like that. 
So don't worry, my hands are clean. I'm just going to load this into this jar. And there we have our two granolas. So fruit and yogurt parfaits, done. Okay, and now it is time for the nuts. These are pretty sticky, so I think I'm going to scrape them off. And you guys, these are mm, so good. I I love just like a savory nut. And that's exactly what these are. I would, I, well, I forgot to put cranberries in. I would definitely, if you like kind of like a little bit of a sweet, I would throw some dried craisins or dried cranberries in. I think that would be delicious. Sam and I sometimes go to this little place. It's a little winery out in Eastern Colorado and they make nuts like this and it's just, oh, they're so good. You blink and you've eaten like 10 pounds of them. They're just like the perfect amount of salty and sweet, a little smoky, a little spicy. So good. Okay, that's all that's gonna fit in this jar, so I'm just gonna pick at these today. Mmm, so good. All right, here is a look at everything we accomplished today, and then tomorrow, when the fruit leather comes out, I will show you that. All right, friends, so it's the next day, and our fruit leather is officially done, so here is what it looks like on the dehydrator sheet. And then here is what it looks like on the parchment paper. So now I'm gonna zoom you in and kind of show you what it looks like up close. And we will go ahead and get these peeled off and then packaged up. I'm super excited with how these turned out. They smell really, really good. So I'm hopeful they're gonna be great. Okay, so here is what our parchment paper version looks like. And it's just coming off really easy. There is a few like where it kind of gets wrinkled in, like where it dried wrinkly. The parchment paper gets a little bit stuck, but that is coming off super easily. Okay, so there we have our fruit leather. It's very like pliable and it's not super like leathery which is nice like you know how some fruit leathers tend to be really tough so wishful thinking this is not tough and it's a lot more like pliable it's actually like bendy versus i feel like some fruit leathers when you make them they're like literal leather Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side and we're going to break free our dehydrator sheet one. Okay, I love how like shiny, I don't know if you can see that, how shiny dehydrator <laughs> trays make things, but okay, I would say that's definitely easier than the parchment paper, but I mean still pretty much the same product that looks awesome yay that was so easy and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to you could definitely like put parchment paper between these and make your own little like fruit roll-ups I think I'm just going to literally roll them like this and then stick them in a Ziploc bag. They still come apart. Just cause I don't, I don't really wanna Ziploc them, but. And I actually stole this recipe from, I think it was the homesteading family. She always has a lot of great recipes. And so I saw this one and was like, I have to give that a go because we love fruit leather it just tends to be very sugary 
and I think this was an awesome, awesome solution. And was a great way to get the rest of those Palisade peaches out of the freezer. I just wanted to show you guys, because I know a lot of times fruit leather tends to be like, like I said, very leathery and hard to eat. And so it gets stuck in your teeth, it's hard to eat, and this is definitely not like that. Mm -hmm. It's really... <laughs> I will say the strawberry flavor is coming out a lot more than the peach, which is funny because I put way more peaches in than I did strawberries, but that's phenomenal. All right, you guys. So that is it for today. Here are our fruit roll-ups and here is it in fruit leather form. So I did some square, some round just because I don't know. That's what felt right. But that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found some of these snacks to be inspirational. I know a lot of those default foods tend to just be our default because they're quick and simple. So I feel like if I can stock up our pantry and refrigerator with easy, healthier choices or choices with less preservatives, then that is always a win. So I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit today or hopefully got inspired to try to make some of your favorite snacks on your own. I just want to say thank you guys so much for spending time out of your day to come hang out with me. If you liked today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. We have a ton of exciting projects and some new members joining our homestead here soon. So I would love for you to tag along on that adventure as well. Thank you so much, friend. I hope you have an amazing day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.